It's time to get the final word on today's game with head coach Dave Rose. It's the BYU Creamery Cougar Post Game Coaches Show. BYU Creamery, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. The Cougar Post Game Coaches Show is also brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union, guiding you forward. Now let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rebell. It is time for the BYU Creamery Cougar Post Game Coaches Show. BYU a winner over Utah State tonight, 95-80 to the final. The Cougs have beaten the Aggies in seven straight meetings. Coach Dave Rose improves to 10-3 and against Utah State and a perfect 5-0 and here at the Marriott Center. Coach Rose now joining us here courtside. And, Coach, congratulations. What a great response from your guys to get this one uh, tonight. Great, great win. You know, I mean, all wins are great, but this, uh, this is, will always be a special one for us because of – you know, just where the situation we were in. And I, I think that uh, a lot of things were happening tonight that, you know, with Nick coming back and um, changing our starting lineup and, and trying to put a game plan together that could slow these guys down because they, they uh, probably have playing as well as anybody, um, any group together, you know, all around so in the country right now. So um, I, I'm just I'm, I'm proud of uh, the fact that they – they regrouped. They got themselves together. They were challenged by the coaching staff, uh, and they responded in a in exactly the way that uh, good teams will respond, where they don't take it on themselves. Each one of them, they rely more on each other, and then they all came out and played well. And so I, I thought the emotion was good. I I, I want to thank the you know <laughs> the fans that that came out because it was a it, it wasn't the largest crowd we've ever had in here, but it was a good, active, live crowd that helped us, you know, all the way through. And, you know, when you're coming off, uh, um, you know, two or three losses, you know, you don't know, you know, who's going to come in and, and support you. And I'm, I'm just grateful for these these students that showed up and, and uh, you know, the season ticket holders fan. I think we had about 12,000 people in yep. here, and that was a, a, a good feel for our guys. And I, I think they, you know, and they played with – just a, 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 an emotion where they were together as a group, even through mistakes and, you know, through tough times and through, uh, you know, uh, good play from, from Utah State, and they just stayed together, and I thought it was a great one. Well, as players, we all face a couple game loose, except maybe you at Houston. I don't know if you guys ever <laughs> lost that many games. Maybe in four years you lost three games, but uh, – you mentioned you challenged the guys. How do you challenge them in that situation over the last couple of days? Well, this, you know, this was, uh, um, you know, an interesting week last week was. And, you know, it's Christmas around the world when they come in and take our building. Every year is is, is different. And, and you, you got those two road games on the road in preseason. And you got to figure out how you're going to deal with it. And we played a couple of neutral court games at that time. We played co- games on the West Coast, t- 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 tried to stay close to home. And. And this this year we got a game in Chicago and a game in Ogden and, and that, or out in Illinois and a game in o- Normal Illinois and, and, and Ogden and I think the disappointment of that loss you know in uh, in Illinois State uh, kind of carried over and that's not a real characteristic of our teams over the years so uh, the challenge was um, to find some real emotion in uh, the actual process and how you play possession by possession and and you communicate to each other and a you know, guy dives on the floor for a ball and then you get another guy you know two or three guys over there to pull him up and get him up and 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 then how you you know try to double team in the post and then respond back to uh recover your, your man and and you know there's a lot of things in our scouting report that made us really nervous we didn't know if we could actually accomplish it because of uh how effective these guys were playing but um, our, our guys not only you know took the challenge, but they really exceeded in it. Because I, of all the things I thought would happen here tonight, I, I didn't think that you know we would be playing with the 20-point lead most of the night. <laughs> you know, and uh, that, that's just a credit to our guys. Utah State came in to tonight sixth nationally in field goal percentage defense, seventh in effective field goal percentage defense, top five in two-point defense, and and coach, you end up on the night shooting 56% field, 46% arc, and 86% stripe. What a great night against a really good defensive team. A team that's playing really well. Yeah, that's our best win of the season and our best game as far as, you know, start to finish, and it's a you know, it's a good time to have a 10 games into the season. <laughs> you know, you need to start seeing kind of the fruits of all the work that these guys have put in, you know, over the year, and so 
you know, we got we had a lot of work to do, and it, it was good to get Nick in there and, and have Nick have some success. I mean, exceeded all my expectations. I knew he'd come in and play hard, and you know, he'd give us a lift, emotional lift because of his effort. But uh, jumps up and sticks his first shot and banks in a three from the baseline. Uh, you probably won't see that one again. You know. Uh, <laughs> But uh, I, th- I thought the minutes that he played, you know, really gave our guys a lift. And now we'll try to put it all together. I'll tell you one thing. McKay, McKay Cannon did everything that we wanted him to do in those first seven, eight minutes, chasing Sam around and, yeah. and got him in tough spots. And, uh, you know, he had a hard time getting shots off early. And you can see what, what kind of player he is. He had a great second half. But uh, our, our guys were ready for it, and I thought they just executed really well. Another number on Nick. He was plus 17 in under 19 minutes of play and scoring his 11 points. Really was a great night. Uh, you, Your three-point percentage has gone up in three consecutive games now. And it's good to see the first one go in tonight, Yeah. right? Yeah, that, that, that we, we jumped up and, and banged that thing. And uh, I, you know, I, I, I'm still trying to figure out what, what's the, the best number for our guys. I, t- I said the other night that I didn't think 14 was enough, but... Uh, uh, I don't know if 30, 30 plus is is the right number either. Well, maybe 24 is a sweet spot. Yeah, That's we, where I, or if we go for 11 for 22 every game, I take that too. Yeah. Yep. Pretty darn close to it. 11 for 24 tonight, uh, 46% on the night. We'll take a break. Uh, more from Coach Dave Rose coming up on the new skin, or rather the uh, new skin BYU Sports Network. You're listening to the BYU Creamery Cougar Post Game Coaches Show on the new skin BYU Sports Network. Now back to the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Welcome back courtside to the BYU Creamery Cougar Post Game Coaches Show. Greg Rubel and Mark Durant visiting with Coach Dave Rose. BYU a winner tonight to 95 to 80 over Utah State. And yet another night where we talk about other things before we get to Yoli Childs, who Coach Rose just had another 31 point night tonight. Yeah, and uh, you know he, he early in the game, he, you know they they had spent they played paid so much attention to him, which helped everybody get free looks. Which you know we've been kind of. Uh, expecting you know, all year that uh, you know he's he's been so unselfish and we get that thing out and you could just see what happened when we started making perimeter shots that that they got softer and softer with him on the double team and then he had plenty of room to kind of roam around in there and he, he's he's so good at that little flip hook shot over his left shoulder and his ability to get him up and then come back with his left hand and you know he he uh, he made a couple. You know, nice fallaways. This, this big kid, this <laughs> Kata is a guy who can, you know, he's going to be a terrific player. I mean, he's got great timing, and uh, you know, he's long and extremely athletic. And you know, I, I think that uh, Yo was was comfortable with him one on one. And then when uh, when Quinn Taylor came in and guarded him number ten, uh, he 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 felt really comfortable with that. And and I, I wanted more of it. I wanted to keep throwing that thing into him, but he's uh, he, he's reading that defense really well. We talked about it last night on my show. It's, it's his ability to to, to make plays uh, is uh, is tremendous. Well, only Sam Merrill played more minutes than T.J. Haas tonight. Played almost 38 for you. And if last week wasn't his best, man, he turned around and had a really good night for you tonight. 20 points, four rebounds, seven assists, one off a career high. A good plus minus, uh, made seven of his 11 shots from the field, four of six from three. When he's that good, it's going to be, uh, you're, you're going to play well. He And, you know, he had uh, just some really big um, offensive possessions where he, um, they had things locked up and then he just created, made a little play for himself. We, we ran a, a little out of bounds play that uh, coaches had drawn up and uh, late in the shot clock. With three seconds left, and he that banged that three. That was a terrific play, yeah, by the way. That, that, Whoever that, drew that up. And everybody thought, I mean, we, we run it, you know, three or four times a week in practice, you know, because that's the, the, the pr- progression that we're, what we go through. And I uh, had a chance to use it tonight, and uh, Yo executed it really well. I thought Yo might take that thing and, <laughs> you know, go to the rim. But uh, TJ, we got a good screen. He came off, off that thing and banged it in. You started McKay Cannon tonight. You said that worked really good on his uh, guarding Merrill, and it, it obviously did. Is that... Uh, a, a game specific thing do you have any idea going forward what you want to do and and why why make the change obvious, uh, obviously obviously well, merrill but we felt two things one we felt that yo would get uh um a lot of attention in the post and we thought that zach from the perimeter would 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 make him pay you know for it um because they usually bring the second post and then we just wanted you know uh, sam to work really hard in the first 
eight, ten minutes of the game and be really, really uncomfortable. And McKay's one of our, our toughest. He's not the biggest guy, but he's strong, and he really, uh, you know, can can understand uh, kind of the concepts of what they're trying to do to get him open. And one of our, our you know, our best system defenders. And so we just put him on him and said, hey, make him work, make him work, make him work. And uh, you know, he went into halftime with only six shots taken, which. Uh, you know, and, and then after after McKay, then Shear got a shot at him, and Connor got a shot at him, and Nick got a shot at him, and uh, I think uh, you know you're not going to keep a good player like that down, but I think we controlled him a little bit tonight. Good vibe in the building tonight uh, with those uh, almost 10, 12,000 fans here, and the in-state run continues for you, Coach Rosen. Concludes in Salt Lake City, which has been a good building for you, Vivint Smart Home Arena, and it's Utah uh, in downtown Salt Lake City here on the weekend. Yeah, and they've had uh, you know a week to. Watches and figures out. We got a couple of days for them, and uh, I, 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 I'm excited to, to be able to play that game. I, I think that uh, players are excited to play it. We'll see how the. Uh, it's the second year of the Beehive Classic, and next year we play uh, Utah State up there in the Vivint Arena, and hopefully it continues. But uh, we'll see. Uh, hopefully the, the fans in the state support it so that we can at least justify it financially. You know, whoever, you know. Is, uh, making those decisions, but uh, I, I like the feel of it, and, and hopefully it's a it's a good day for us. It's an 11 a.m. radio pregame and a noon tip for BYU and Utah, followed by Utah State and Weber State. And by the way, uh, the job Craig Smith's doing with his first team in Logan is pretty uh it's pretty impressive. Really, really impressive. And I told him that I, I, I just I, I think he's going to have real a lot of fun. I mean, see, it's a young team, um, but uh, I, I think he's you know he he kind of got a you know, a bad hop of coming out of the conference meetings as far as where he's going to be picked, and I think these guys are all determined that that's not where they're going to finish in the Mountain West Conference, and I uh, I, I think it'll be fun watching them throughout the year to see how they do. You've been in that spot where you were, you were picked lower than you thought you'd be, and you yeah. finished a lot higher. My first year, yeah, and the, the number was the same, <laughs> number nine, and I, I do remember, uh, you know, the d determined uh, group of guys who were just bound to make sure that that's not what happened, and uh uh, I think he's got the same attitude going with that, that group. Well, memorable night tonight for your guys. Great response, uh, and uh, best of luck here against the Utes on the weekend. Dave. All right, thanks a lot, Greg. All right, that's Coach Dave Rose. We'll hear from Craig Smith next here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.